there is an algorithm that solves the single source shortest paths problem when there are negative edge weights. Okay, and we wrote the code last time. And in fact, one thing that we have missed last time is this. So this is a line that we did not have in the code that we wrote last time. Uh, you know, this we can skip this line if we initialize all ar array elements to infinity in the beginning. So if here, instead of filling the first column with infinity, you fill all rows with infinity. So the first row is 0, and you fill all the remaining rows with infinity, then you don't need this. So you need to in initialize everything to infinity uh, somehow, Wh whether you initialize we initialize them all at once, or you initialize it only one, uh, one cell at a time. Uh, why? Because you're looking for the shortest path. So when, uh, before you discover, before you discover a path, uh, the value is going to be infinity. So remember how it, uh, the idea of Bellman Ford, you are trying to find the best distance for this V, and you are looking at all the predecessors or the incoming edges. So this is an incoming edge. For each incoming edge, there is what we call a predecessor, uh, like u1, u2, u3. And for each one of them, we are looking for the minimum distance. So this loop here searches for the, uh, you know, the shortest path from source to v. So if we have these numbers, <coughs> 7 and 5, uh, 10 and 3, and 9 and 1. In this case, you know, the shortest path to this is going to be, so this will give us 12, this will give us 13, this will give us 11. So the shortest is going to be the 11. Okay? Uh, we go through all the predecessors. Now, there are a couple of things that I wanted to say. I think the analysis here, we did not quite finish the analysis last time, or at least you know, the rest of uh, the analysis did not get recorded. So I want to go through the analysis again. It's not, a, it's not very sophisticated, but uh, the main observation is that this is V, and this is V. So we have uh, a, a doubly nested loop with V. But inside the loop, we have this loop that goes through the, all the edges. So this is in aggregate E. So this is E in aggregate, which means that if we look at the internal V loop and the E in aggregate, we will get this. So this thing in blue, this is just our, uh, you know, our famous V loop with E inside. So we have seen this. Uh, many times in previous algorithms. And this is just a V plus E. This is a V plus E uh, loop. Now, this V plus E is inside a loop that, g that executes V times, because each time we do a, 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 a different iteration with a different number of allowed edges. So we go from one allowed edge to all the way to V minus 1 allowed edges. So basically, the, the total running time is going to be O of V multiplied by V plus E. So the time, running time, um, T of V and E equals O of V multiplied by V plus E, which is equal to O of V squared plus V E. Now, if we assume that all vertices are reachable from the source, then under the assumption that all vertices are reachable from the source, what will be the minimum number of edges needed for that? If I tell you that all the vertices are reachable from the source, what, what's the minimum number of edges that is implied by this? V minus 1. Because you can never connect V vertices using less than V minus 1 edges. V minus 1 edges is the minimum number of vertices, edges that you need to connect V vertices. So if all edges 
if all vertices are reachable from the source, we will have E equals omega of V. Because E will be at least V minus 1, so we can say that the order of E is going to be the same as the order of V or greater. So how great can it be? How much greater? What's the limit of E? V squared. Can't be any larger than V squared. Right? So it can't exceed V squared. Now, given this, in, in this case, T of V and E can be simplified to what? So what can we delete here? Under the assumption that E is omega of V, what can we delete? We can delete V squared because in this case, V E will be at least as large as V squared. So we are saying that it's connected. So this E cannot be less than V. So this is going to be at least V squared. So we can just get rid of this V squared. So in this case, it will be T of V E and E equals E uh, O of V E or E V, whatever. So that's what we get. So if, uh, and normally the, we are interested in a graph that has all vertices reachable from the source. Now, if the graph is dense, <coughs> if the graph <coughs> is dense, then what will be the time in this case if we have a dense graph? It will be V cubed. In this case, T of V and E equals O of V cubed. So for a dense graph, the bellman ford algorithm is a, v is, a, is a V cubed algorithm. OK? If the graph is complete. Of course, you know, here dense, when we say dense, we analyze the extreme case of dense, which is complete. <coughs> OK? One more thing that I wanted to say about uh, the bellman ford algorithm, uh, which is quite important, in fact. Now, we said that you know, the example that we went through last time, we had v equals 5. So we did iterations 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Why was the maximum number 4? Because it's v minus 1. Because in a, in a graph, you can't have a simple path that has more than v minus 1 edges. If the, if, if the path has more than V minus 1 edges, then it's, it cannot be a simple path. And what's the definition of a simple path? What's a simple path? Cannot have cycles. Cannot have cycles and cannot repeat vertices. So a simple path you know, uh, visits each uh, vertex at most once or only once. I cannot visit a vertex more than once. OK, now the question is, with the Bellman Ford algorithm is an algorithm in which in each iteration, we may get some improvement. In each iteration, we may discover better paths because in each iteration, we are allowing more edges. So we're increasing the set of edges or the set of paths that are acceptable or permissible. OK. So what if we do, in this case, we do a fifth iteration? Should we see an improvement? And what will happen if we see an improvement in the fifth iteration? What does that mean? And that's, that's not a simple it yeah. will have a cycle if we are doing a fifth iteration. Yeah, exactly. Well, it, what kind of cycle? Package. No. And it, well, it's a cycle that if we go through it, if we go a, 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 along that cycle, then we will, uh, we will improve. Uh, we will improve the cost. So what kind of cycle will that be? So there is a cycle in the graph. 
And when you go more times, when you travel more times uh, um, you know, along that cycle, you will increase the, uh, sorry, you will decrease the cost. So that must be a cycle with a negative cost. So you, sh you must have something like A, B, C, and this is 2, 5, and then D. So you must have something like uh, minus 3 and minus 4. So if you have something like this in the graph, then what's the length of the sh let's, a, let, let's say that A is the source. A is our source. What's the length of the shortest path from A to C in this case? Minus infinity. Yeah, it's going to be minus infinity. Minus infinity means that if you have a cycle with a, a cost less than one, or less than zero, sorry, a negative cost cycle, then you can basically keep improving the path by going in this cycle multiple times. I so I can keep going and improving the path. Mm -hmm. When I go more, things are going to get better. So what this means is that, means two things. If your graph has a cycle with a, uh, with a negative cost like this, not a cycle that has negative edges. Like not every cycle with negative edges will, have a, uh, will be bad. So for example, if this is minus 1, if I change this to minus 1, no problem. Because the net cost of this cycle will be positive. So this is fine. This is not, a, this is not the problematic case. So if you have a, a positive weight or a positive cost cycle, then it's not a problem. But if you have minus 4 here, you can keep going around this uh, cycle many, many times, an infinite number of times, and you will get minus infinity. In this case, we say that the shortest path problem is undefined. The problem is not defined. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't make sense. Right. So it's just minus infinity, or it's not well defined. Or You can say that some of the paths are going to have uh, you know, a length of minus infinity. Okay. But now, how does this relate to uh, the Bellman-Ford algorithm? If the Bellman-Ford algorithm makes an improvement in the extra iteration, which uses v rather than <coughs> v minus 1, then the, in that case, Bellman-Ford's algorithm detects a negative weight or a negative cost cycle. Okay, this because there is no way to get an improvement in, the, in iteration number v unless you have a negative weight cycle. Okay, any questions on this concept? Yeah, so since this is um, a less constrained form of dystros, um, shouldn't we have expected it to be have a higher you know, time complexity like going into it? Well, it's less constrained, yes. Uh, well, I don't think you can think of it as being less constrained. In fact, it's just more general. So it's, uh, you know, the problem is more general. So, you know, the subtle difference between being more general and being less constrained is that more general means you can have instances uh, that, that are valid instances for this but are not valid instances for that. So, for the problem. So, the shortest, the single source, shortest paths problem with only positive edge weights. So this is a, a special case of the general problem of single source shortest paths with any edge weights. So the problem that is solved by Dijkstra is a special case of the general problem that is solved by Bellman Ford. You cannot think of this as, you know, uh, Bellman uh, as Bellman Ford B or the problem solved by Bellman Ford is less constrained. You know, less constrained is like, you know, I give you the same instance, 
So let's go back to the fractional knapsack and uh, uh, fractional knapsack and zero one knapsack. So for the fractional and the, the zero one knapsack, given the same instance, if you add more constraints to the problem, which is the integrality constraint, you make it a zero one knapsack for the same instance. But this does not apply here. So if I give you an instance with uh, negative edge weights, you cannot make it an instance of the single source shortest paths problem with positive edge weights by adding more constraints, right? So if I give you an instance with negative edge weights, you cannot make it an instance of the single source shortest paths problem by adding more constraints. So here, the, the, it's, a, it's a different concept. It's, we're talking about a more general problem versus uh, a less general problem or a special case of it. It's not comparable to the zero one knapsack versus fractional knapsack. Okay. <coughs> but that was a, a good question, by the way, because on the surface it appears like, yes, it's, uh, you know, uh, the problem that is solved by uh, the Bellman Ford algorithm, it, it appears to be, you know, on the surface, it seems to be less constrained, but it, it, indeed it's not. Okay, any questions? Um, 